Most of us were in the civil rights movement, but it was just a beginning. We were still poor, and we still couldn't find jobs. Many of our brothers and sisters were forced out of farming by large landowners with machines and chemicals. Some of us struggled to keep our land, but we couldn't sell our crops at a fair price. So we decided to work together to build something of our own to grow on. We decided that a cooperative was what we needed to save our land and way of life. Well, I thought it was something good to help the low-income people. That's why I joined. My husband done retired, and I'm got to do all the little scuffling and trying to, you know, get by the little end of check he gets, you know, once a month. You know, it didn't take care of the business and whatnot, so we decided to plant over there, help us out. And the income we getting, it helps us so much. And so without swap, I don't see how we're going to, you know, make it. Because I thought once, you know, they were going to stop taking the okra. And I said, Lord, I don't want to have a heart attack. Got all this okra in the field and nowhere to sell it to. So what's going to happen? Because if it wasn't for swap, there's nowhere to sell it to. Swap is a cooperative that was organized to serve the needs of the small farmers in this area. Uh, in the last 10 years, the mechanization of the farms has created a situation where uh, quite a few of these farmers were, were without anything to do. So this co-op was organized to be able to provide an income for the small farmer on a small amount of land. So we chose to go into what we call a vegetable producing co-op. We grew our own crops on our own land, but the pack and shed is owned by all of us, and we each have an equal voice in running it. Our shed isn't making a profit off us, so we get the best possible price for our crops, and we can employ some of our young people to work. It takes long, hard hours to work to grade and pack the crops. But that isn't enough. You have to make contact with buyers and know how to sell to get the best price. And you have to teach members how to produce a uniform crop suitable for sale. We just couldn't do that on our own. So we met with 22 other co-ops and started the Federation of Southern Cooperatives in 1967. The Federation provides marketing, training, assistance in bookkeeping and accounting, management help, and other services to member co-ops. I hadn't been able to go down to the shed this year, but now year before last, I used to take the over. But now since I got ill mother at home, I don't go. I used to just ride down there with my husband. And I just enjoying down there with the people grading open and just getting together, you know, helping one another out down there. And we'll just go to the, you know, belt and we just help each other to grade the old crowd. Uh, we was a bunch of farmer uh, who was out there struggling, trying to uh, sell our sweet potato. They had, uh, most of the small and the black farmer didn't had an outlet to sell the sweet potato. So an example that right now is the peak of the, of the, uh, uh, harvesting time. And they wouldn't even give us a crit, uh, to harvest our potato. So we're a bunch of farmers. I was also a farmer at that time, a shack rock, that got together and tried to get uh, something going. 
we was able to organize Grand Marie uh, in 1965 and 66. And at that very same year, some of the shippers were stopping some of our members' truck on the road to try to get them to come to, uh, to that shed. But most of the people stuck with the cooperative. Well, the biggest problem is to, to get the members together. We had problem, money problem, financing problem in the, in the past. And uh, the members was kind of skeptical about bringing the potato there because they was afraid they wouldn't go get paid right away. And most small farmers, as you know, they need, they need the money as they pack the potatoes to keep on going. Co-op's potatoes might never get sold without help from the Federation. Most of them go to chain stores and wholesalers, but more and more are being sold directly to food co-ops and buying clubs. If I come here at 6.30 in the morning, I stay till some nights, 6, 7. A lot of time I stay here till 9, 30, 10 o'clock when some people have to bring some potato in. I have to wait till the potato get here. I know I'm working for these people and I want to see that they get the best benefit from that crop or whatever I do for them. I have a very close relationship with the Federation and they've been giving me marketing advice. Last two or three years, that funding situation has been uh, very low, but in the past, you know, the Federation have, have paid management subsidy down here and also some money at, you know, grant money when they had it. I had some problem which I didn't see, and I'm, you know, I, I came as a sharecropper. Uh, I have a third grade education, so I relied on people like George and uh, people like that to give me some information. Uh, technical assistance on marketing or anything that I need, you know, uh, in the field of management. It's an organized plan, or it was an organized plan, during what we call the civil rights days to drive the black population out of this area. This was a predominantly black area, and for people who have taken oath politically uh, with the right to vote. So the white citizen councils and uh, some voices white group thought it would be to their advantage to, to drive the young blacks away. And of course the young blacks thought it was to their advantage to leave. And they felt that it was a better life for them in the north. And uh, we organized this organization to give them a means of being able to stay here. There are 150,000 people in the Federation. Together we own more than a million acres of land. The annual meeting is the one time each year that the members can get together and share experiences. A member from Georgia, let's say, can get together with a member from South Carolina or Louisiana and find out what their co-op is up to. The 
the 130 co-ops belong to 11 state associations. At the annual meeting, members caucus in their state associations and hear reports of the Federation's activities. They discuss and vote on the annual report, bylaw changes, the general direction of the Federation. Yes, you have an association for an Each state association also elects a member to the board of directors, which is the decision-making body of the Federation. Uh, hopefully we will draw trainees from uh, South Carolina, Georgia. The board of directors listens to reports and ideas from the Federation staff that works out of us. In the last two years, the staff has been cut 40% because of cutbacks in government and other funding support but it still costs $50,000 a month just to keep the Federation going. It's a constant struggle to make payroll, but the people here came out of the Civil Rights Movement and believe in the Cooperative Movement, and we are determined to keep on working. The Federation Education Department prints material for all the member cooperatives and also for training classes given at the Federation. We talk about confirmation. Yes. You know, uh, in choosing a bull, a person would have to say, see quite a few bulls. He would have to look at some, some top line bulls and he would have to go to the other extreme so that he can actually make a judgment as, as opposed to one to the other. How many pounds per pound a day? Oh, uh, you mean by what, the, what, what should you feed to gain how many pounds per day? Maintain. This, this to Maintain. get a 31, yeah. Oh, yeah. well then you have to look at what class brew cow you're talking about. Is it a 900 pound cow? Yeah. Is it a 1,000 pound cow? Is it 800 pound cow? I'm getting worried for nobody. We try to shape our training to fit the practical needs of our members, whether it's raising cattle or accounting. The Demonstration Beef Cattle Project is located on a section of the Federation's 1,325 acres at Epps. When it's fully developed, the farm will bring in revenue for the Federation, as well as being a training ground and a source of breeding animals for the membership. We want to expand the training program by building a library with classrooms. We already have administration, dormitory, and cafeteria buildings at Epps. You know, at one point, our ideals were a big house, you know, money, clothes. Then when we came into the Federation, then we see people that have no house, what they call a house, I cannot consider it to be a house. So then, you know, my whole entire point of view shifts from, you know, what can I do for myself and my family and, and other people? So you, you don't worry so much about, you know, well, my friend's got a new car this year can I get a new car this year? Or I've been married for 10 years and after 10 years you should be able to live in a nice house. You know, what, do my kids dress better than the other kids? You know, is my husband making more money? That's no longer of utmost importance to you. And what becomes important is, can I help this man with eight children make a living so he can feed his children. You know, we become more aware of these kinds of things. Most time you just get, you live in what you have and that's it. You don't get no better, nothing. 
And that's just it. You just live in what you have. And if you don't want to pay rent to live in that, you just move on someplace else. And most people don't want to leave, but this is all they know. I'm on the welfare, and I'm not able, you know, to build a house. It's riding down. Need leveling up the porch riding. Need fixing. Mm -hmm. Books. You know, walk like in a mildew. Strange leaks in the house. Born wood wet. Can't get the fire started. Can't cook. I'll wait till the stop rain dry off some. We don't have enough money to keep the house up. We'll call for a little money we get a month from the welfare people. It ain't enough. I'll just be glad and happy, you know, you know, that I could get a new house, my children. But... Most people who live in rundown housing are too poor to qualify for federal housing loans. The Panola Land Buyers Association in Alabama was organized with the help of the Federation and began to build housing. They were able to build three brick houses with private low interest financing obtained through the Federation. The house has four bedrooms, have a living room, dining room and kitchen combined, bathroom, and also have running water. Two of my brothers slept with me when I was living there. Now I have a room by myself. There are 40 more families in the cooperative who are still waiting to get their houses built. The local authorities put a halt to construction by refusing to okay the co-op's water supply because it was too salty to meet the health standards. The whole gains for settlement is salt water with colored and white drinking. You don't see it in the health department out there. But I think that it's a group of colored people working together trying to get a better place to live in. And it's, they're trying to stop it. And they're holding the water. Well, the figure if you can't get water, you, you know, you can't have a lot of housing unit and things if you don't have water. Recently, the county received federal funds to build a water system, which would make it possible to revive plans for building the housing cooperative. In the meantime, the cost of building the houses was increased by a third during the years we were delayed. When I was young, I thought things could be done much more quickly. Uh, now, with, with uh, having been involved with the Federation now close to 10 years, that aggressiveness and that uh, strong drive and uh, impatience and whatnot has somewhat been tempered with a little wisdom. And I understand our national situation, social and economic situation. I understand uh, the problems among the privileged people that are not only their economic problem, but the emotional and psychological problems, and how all those things have to be dealt with, how people have to be educated, uh, it does not disturb me, you know, like uh, when a group, uh, if a group wanted to relate to the Federation just because of the economic benefits and does not show any loyalty. Because I know that along with only servicing or addressing an economic need, you have to also offer, you know, like uh, some developmental resources. People have to develop. People have to develop. The total person has to develop. And and that's part of the responsibility of the Federation, not only to provide needed resources, but, you know, to help create, you know, like a, a framework within which, you know, like people, the total person can grow. In this area, jobs are very limited. And most of the women who are employed here were previously worked as domestics, and they earned from four to five, maybe eight dollars a week. So we decided that we would get together and form some type of business that we could own and operate ourselves. It was just started by a group of really determined ladies forming a co-op. I think we was making about 
fifteen dollars every two weeks. Something was making, but we was determined to have this plant, and that's why we just kept on. Most of the time, we went home without any pay at all. For my part, I, I knew it would, if it didn't help me, I knew it would help some of my children or my grandchildren, and that's why I just kept on coming back, trying to help to get started. Work. So now we get to ten hours. We're making good living. Just about average life. Yeah, it's not getting rich, but it's uh, it's making a living. My only son was in eleventh grade when I first started working here, and he graduated this past school term. And my husband had been laid off work for quite a while. And if I hadn't got a job here and started work, no doubt, he probably had to drop out of school or something because I couldn't get everything that he wanted to uh, participate in school activities. And after I got the job here, I realized how it helped me. It really helped me. And I had seven children in school at the time. I believe everybody feels like the co-op is their business. To take pride in ownership, to take pride in making decisions about how the co-op is operated. Uh, they take pride in having a place that they can come and work with a little dignity. And we have gained such skill that we are able now to soak for Jesse Penny, Sears Roebuck, and many others. I fear that if the Federation had not provided both technical and financial assistance to our co-op, we would not be where we are today. I like working. It's for us. It's That's not right. one person thing. It's everybody. Mm -hmm. Ever since I've been here, they've been good. We've been had our downfalls, but we stood, stayed right here. So now, I'm glad I did. I hope I'll be continuing to stay on this. Maybe after I'm gone, somebody else will come along. more colored doctors look like. Sometimes we have a hard time when we go in to a doctor. So he got to wait on a certain group of people before he get around to the black skin portion. The doctor now, he said I just was a little low in eye and he said my blood was okay and everything, but I was just a little bit low in eye. He didn't tell me nothing to do. He didn't give me anything. He said he was just a little low. Tell you come back. Tell me come back on the thirteen and you check that and see. Oh well, he gives me the medicine. Well, when I take the medicine, I, it makes me feel good about a day. And after then, well, I'm going back in the same old feeling. I might need to go to the hospital and get cut up my lungs. <laughs> High blood, my sugar run up, and my kidneys are fine, my hat and my hip and fine. I had all that together. And I had to pay eighteen dollars every two weeks for about six or eight weeks. And now he gave me four weeks. My income very small. There's a clear need for a low income health center in the rural area. The Federation organized groups like the Whitfield Community Health Club and worked with them to get one built. They held bake sales, raffles, anything to raise money. And when the Federation was finally able to secure a small grant to build the center, the community helped with the construction. The most prevalent health problems in the area are diabetes, hypertension, malnutrition, and different heart diseases. What we will try to do here at the Black Belt Community Health Center is to meet as many of these needs as we possibly can. 
we will try to also educate the public concerning different things such as general health care and diet, especially diet. They need a lot of dietary counseling and education. So if we concentrate on preventive medicine, we might not have to actually have so much acute medicine practice. of the Black Belt of Alabama and Mississippi is the largest public works project now on the way in the country, the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway. It will create a major new inland water route that will cut through land owned by the Federation and its members and bring industrialization to the area. But they justified this multi-billion dollar project by the jobs and benefits it would bring the impoverished communities that surround it. This hasn't happened. Jobs are not going to area people. The Federation has to set up heavy equipment training programs because most of the skilled jobs were given to workers from as far away as Iowa and Oklahoma. Several of our trainees got jobs on the waterway. Before I started this train, I was a tractor trailer truck driver. The waterways coming through, and if uh, a lot of the freight be hauled or be carried by uh, water instead of by trucks, and I, and they were talking about selling out, liquidating the stock, going out of business, which they did sell out. And I thought maybe that would cause them to cut back some of the trucks, and I had opportunity to take the trains. So that's what I did. Forty percent of the people in the waterway area are black. We organized the Minority People's Council to bring minority people together to demand 40% of the jobs and other benefits the waterway will bring in construction once it is completed and industry moves in. Gainesville plan calls for a maximum of 20% minority utilization in an area that's roughly 75% black. We have some serious problems with that, knowing that federal contracts should be reflective of the population makeup of a particular community. So what we did was, we, the Minority People's Council, byway pack of the heavy and highway unions, and representatives of the AFL-CIO Civil Rights Division, and we called for a plan that called for 40% Utilization of minorities up and down the waterway, mobiles, the Tennessee line. The Federation views the Tennessee Tom Bigby Waterway as one of the many projects coming to the South which black and poor people must have a share in. <laughs> 